afternoon and welcome to the gateway live update today is monday and it is the second of november yes second of november tomorrow's election day a lot in the news about that and we're gonna have a special webcast tomorrow for election day now never when i began this in february the end of february did i ever think that we would still be here praying for coronavirus in november never in my greatest imagination i never dreamed never thought so we started a couple times a week and went every day and still still today still in november there's controversy with coronavirus we suffer with it all the time yesterday we had a mask controversy right before service and some people acting immature left not even discussing with me or anyone in leadership they just like left and uh, I'm very discouraged the way some people act i really am but i am encouraged the way god handles things and and again the bible says that the man of god must not quarrel and so forth and and we don't do that no do politics either but we do get upset about things that are wrong and I think that these COVID things are handled wrong. I think our governor in New Jersey has been wrong and we oppose him. We're, we're, we're open here. So we oppose him because we believe the greater good, God, is more important. Anyway, with that said, we're here on a blustery, windy Monday. It feels like the whole place is gonna blow down sometimes because the wind is so hard. And we're grateful to be here, grateful for a new month, even though I thought COVID would be over by tomorrow. So I've been saying, we'll see if I'm right. Anyway, we're in first Peter chapter three and we have some really neat things and guys, I really encourage you don't get, let these things stress you out as a believer, give it to the Lord. Don't struggle with it. And the same's true with the passage here in first peter 3 again and i'm going to review what we did last thursday verse verse 18 first peter 3 18 says for the messiah also suffered once for sins the unrighteous for the the righteous for the unrighteous that he might bring us to god being put to death in the flesh but made alive in the spirit really important now, Peter goes crazy here. What you would think, I would think, because this becomes a very difficult passage, but we're going to cover it today, and you're going to understand it. So don't worry. Jesus suffered being righteous for the unrighteous, for me and for you. We are unrighteous. The world is unrighteous, but Jesus suffered for us voluntarily. He gave his back to the beaters. He gave his beard to the people that ripped it out. He gave his hands to those who nailed spikes in his hands, nine inch nails, and on his feet. Jesus did it for you and I because he loves us. Jesus suffered the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, that he might bring us to God. Being put to the death, he was put to death. Jesus suffered and died for us. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. Jesus, when he died, he was put to death, but still alive in the spirit. Everyone says, oh, if Jesus is God, how could he be killed? Jesus put death in the flesh, in the body, the, the biological part of the body, but was quickened or made alive in the spirit. The spirit in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison. Now, what does that mean? And what's that talking about? A lot of people, a lot of controversy on that. When it says he went to proclaim, he proclaimed salvation to those who were in Abraham's bosom. Now, I don't want to get too deep into theology here. And if you're really interested in this, I will send you a link for free books that you can read in PDF format that explain 
the doctrine of death and punishment and eternal suffering and eternal life. We call that eschatology and theology, the study of last things. It isn't just what happens at the rapture or when Jesus comes back, but it's the last things. It's death. It's standing before his throne. It's the Bema Seat judgment. It's the great white throne judgment. These things are part of last things. And when it tells us that Jesus was put to death in the flesh, his body was nailed to the cross and he died. That's what that means. But he was made alive in the spirit. Although he died in flesh, he was made alive in the spirit. And then he went and proclaimed salvation to those in prison. Who in prison? Well, he's going to say that when we get down to this passage. And again, some people get freaked out by this because they think it's freaky. I don't get freaked out at all. I think it's neat. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in spirit in which or in who, however you want to translate that. Translations have it differently. And you shouldn't get stressed out when they do. With In who or whom he went and proclaimed or preached. The word proclaim is the Greek word kidigma that means to proclaim or the same word that's used for preach. He proclaimed to the spirits in prison. Why? Now I'm going to read this in a couple of translations. Because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, eight, is, eight in all, were saved and bought safely through water. And this water corresponds to water baptism, baptism it says, don't say water, which now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body or filth of the flesh, King James, but an appeal to God for a good conscience. Or let's go back there before, again, people get freaked out on this. It's real easy. It's not difficult. Don't freak, don't worry. It's saying that Jesus went, and it doesn't mean like the Apostles' Creed, which was not really the Apostles, was written way into the second century that says Jesus suffered dead and buried and he descended into hell. Now, Jesus never descended into hell. First of all, you have to know the words that are used for hell in the Bible and what it's talking about. He descended to the place of the dead. We call it Sheol in Hebrew, Sheol. In, in Greek, it's Hades. It's the same place, Sheol, Hades, the abode of the dead. When the Hebrew people died, they were gathered to their fathers in the grave, in the bone box, and they went to be in Abraham's bosom, in Sheol, in the place of the dead, the abode of the dead. Now, that was a temporary place because when Jesus proclaimed liberty, all the people on Abraham's bosom were liberated into heaven. Heaven. Not any longer in Abraham's bosom. But the other place, the other part of Hades, is a storage until Jesus comes back. And then that will be, the whole thing will be cast into the lake of fire. The people who disobeyed God long ago in the days of Noah while the ark wasn't preparing, it says here, they're all going to go to the lake of fire. See, what we hell, Gehenna, Hades, all are temporary places. The lake of fire is the finality. That's what you need to know. We know, you know, when you tell someone to go to hell, when you get mad at them, which is a bad thing to do, you're telling them to be eternally separated from God because that's what hell is. That's what the lake of fire is. They'll be eternally separated from God. That's a really horrible thing to say when you think about it that real way. That's why that's called a curse. It's called a curse. You're cursing them, saying, go to this place, be separated from God for eternity. And they don't have to go. They don't have to go there. You don't have to go there because Jesus died the righteous for the unrighteous to bring us to God. And Jesus went and proclaimed to the people liberty to the people who came out and went to heaven. And he proclaimed salvation to the people that were there from the days of Noah. Hey, we're delivered. That's all he did. He didn't go down there and bring them all to heaven for free and all that. No, that's not what happened. 
he proclaimed the proclamation that he was supposed to do. He proclaimed to the spirits in prison because they formally did not obey. They didn't. In the days of Noah, while the ark was being built. Now, it's, that's NIV, while the ark was being built. And I got to say, I like the King James there because it says, who waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was a preparing. You know, you know, Peter there in the King James spoke with, he spoke like, you know, my grandfather. He, like the ark was a preparing. He, he no speak of proper English. That, that's, that's what it sounds like anyway, but that's King James while the ark was being built, while the ark was preparing. In that, in it, that is the ark, Noah's ark. Only a few were saved. Eight people. Noah, his wife, his three sons and their wives. That's it. Eight people. And one each of male and female of animals. That was all that was on the ark. Everyone else in that deluge was totally destroyed. It was totally destroyed. And Peter's saying that the water that held the ark up, the water signifies water baptism. Why? Because in water baptism, we die. We're buried with Christ and we're raised to walk a newness of life. That's why he says, in it only a few, eight and all, were saved through water. And the like figure, where unto baptism doth even also now save us. Now, people get all, oh, baptism saves you. Look, I want to get baptized. No, listen, baptism doesn't save you without fit. You have to be, repent of your sin and turn to Jesus Christ. There are a lot of people who've done that. They've come, they try to get baptized just to think it's going to be a magic cure. And it's not that. Real water baptism is for believers who say, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Remember the Ethiopian eunuch? You were traveling down the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, there's water. What hinders me from being immersed? And they pulled over, and the Ethiopian eunuch was baptized there. Great thing. Neat. Awesome. Really cool. I think it was great. But he believed because Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And the eunuch said, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And we do the same today. When we get baptized somebody, we have them say some kind of profession of faith. Like, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God or Jesus is Lord or something. Because water doesn't do save you. The blood of Jesus saves you. Amen? We all know that. So that's what he means here when he says the like figure where unto baptism doth even also now save us. Or as the um, ESV translate it, translates it, it says, in it, a few, that is eight persons, were bought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you not as a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And again, I think it's a cool passage. Some people think it all freaked out. It sounds weird. It's saying baptism saves us. No, it's saying it saves us when we're with Christ, when we're his. That's what it's talking about. Not not a removal of the filth from the flesh. You can get dipped in water a hundred billion times and not believe Jesus is Lord, and it ain't going to do a thing for you. So, but if you do believe that, you should be immersed. Amen? All right, well, we will... Uh, pick up here tomorrow again. Um, thank you for joining us. Again, difficult passage. Some people say, I thought it was pretty simple. Let me know what you think. You can send comments or um, inbox me. I'd like to know. And uh, here during COVID, as we're still suffering during COVID, and I really hope it's over this week. <laughs> I, I really do. Uh, and I say that seriously don't like the way things are going it's a shame there's no gubernatorial election here in new jersey because i would like to see the guy that's in there to go because he's putting us in bondage for no reason and i do use the word bondage but we're going to pray for coronavirus right now don't forget tomorrow join us for our special election edition election as we uh talk about the vote and what we're allowed to now as a pastor what i'm allowed to share we'll share tomorrow special edition tomorrow on election day 2020 so we'll join you then let's pray right now and don't forget nine o'clock p.m we'll be praying again join us
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your word today. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord, that you've called us into your kingdom. <clears throat> we thank you that our Messiah proclaims liberty both to those who are lost and to those who are saved. And he leads us safely into heaven with him. We thank you for him who died, him being righteous for us who are unrighteous. Oh, Lord, we can never be so grateful for him. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we, we come against the coronavirus. Lord, we ask you to destroy it, to wipe it out, to completely heal this land from this thing, Lord. And as this election goes through, and all the games that are being played behind the scenes, Lord, by evil, wicked people, they would be exposed. And you would have the right man appointed to office. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And thank you for joining us. We'll see you back tomorrow. Exciting tomorrow. Um, you know, I would like to see miracle happen, and I hope you would too. Uh, and with God, listen, with God, all things are possible. And all things are possible than the belief. So let's believe God. We'll see you tomorrow. Until we greet you on the morrow, may God's richest and blessed be here.